Everybody hates Tesla. So we're going to be reviewing today a product. Our solar roof product is one of the best products out there available in the marketplace. But what I do want to actually inform you guys about what's different about my series and everyone hates Tesla is I like to talk about the company. I like to talk about the details about a product, our services that we offer at Tesla. I say we like I'm working for the company, but <laughs> net net, if you guys didn't know, I'm a shareholder. I invested in Tesla for a very long time before the wave, before the fad, all the way back to 2017. So I've been a long time investor. It's always 2024 right now, but through the whole entire time, I haven't kept up with year to date or week to week, month to month, or reported news about what's going on in the stock market or what some guy says about Tesla. There's other YouTubers that provide that great commentary all day, every day. What I want to actually be able to dive into is the company, the products, the staff, right? The stories of Tesla. So you guys can know far beyond the headlines and the clickbait of what the company is actually doing, right? What's different about their products. And not only that, I want, us to review the customers and clients that actually are on YouTube talking about this product. And so we got Marcus, the big homie, the one and only, started from nothing, built it into something. He's going to be reviewing Tesla's solar roof review and was it worth it? So let's track and see what he has to say about our amazing products and services that we offer at Tesla. Let's get in. Let's get active, guys. <laughs> Hi, my name is Marquez Brownlee, and I have not paid for electricity in a year. I have a bunch of electrical appliances, computers, game console, TVs, air conditioning, and I drive an electric car to and from work every single day and charge at home. Zero dollar bill. So I know I had a lot of questions about how this stuff worked, how much it cost, how much it generated, a whole bunch of that stuff before I got started. And now I finally have all the answers. Let's get into it. So like, share, subscribe, fair juice, and let's get into it. Let's get active. Zero, not paying nothing for electricity. Come on, man. I want to tap in. You guys don't want to go half on the bill. You guys don't want to not pay on the bill. I have had solar panels on my roof at home for the past 12 months now, and I waited this long specifically because now I've seen all four seasons and I've observed a wide variety of performance and I've run all the numbers and I have a lot of thoughts about them. So I want to share. So first of all, for those familiar, there are a lot of options for solar systems at home. I like that they're called solar systems too. But there are a lot of different companies who make solar systems to power all the electrical needs of a home, including an electric car. So I know I wanted to do this for a while since the whole point for me was to be able to drive electric for the foreseeable future and actually be able to know that the energy is coming from a sustainable source, the sun. But first, it's actually important to understand that a big part, a big part of this solar system is batteries as well. So a normal house is connected to the electrical grid and whenever something in the house, whether it's a light bulb or a computer or an appliance calls for electricity, it pulls from the grid and spins up a meter on the side of the house that tallies how much you've pulled. Then at the end of the month- And remember guys, that energy that you're pulling from the grid has just been generated. It's not stored anywhere unless you got Tesla storage mega packs, but let's continue. Month you get billed for how much electricity you've used, great. Now, if you just add solar panels to this house, when the sun shines during the day on those tiles, it can use that electricity to directly power things in the house. Now, of course, if it's cloudy or if you have a bunch of stuff on all at once and the demand is more than the power from the sun is providing, then it'll pull the rest of what it needs from the grid and spin the meter as well. But most importantly, as- So remember that, right? So if you use it up too much, then what it's generating or it's cloudy, then it'll pull something from the grid. Okay, let's go. We track it, Marcus. As soon as the sun goes down, the electricity generated goes to zero. And it just so happens that most people come home from work as the sun is going down, and that's when they turn on all the lights and do the laundry and charge the car, etc. So you're still going to be pulling from the grid for most stuff. Now, that's actually fine for most people because if the goal, which a lot of people's goal is, is to have a zero dollar electricity bill, then this can actually be accomplished because the power company will hopefully, depending on where you live, but ideally be running something called net metering so what this means is when the sun shines on the roof and the excess all right so net metering all right let's go let's see what he's talking about electricity is being generated because nobody's home the house actually spins the electrical meter backwards as it sends extra electricity back to the grid then when the sun goes down and you get home and use a bunch of electricity from the grid the meter spins back forwards and so ideally the total usage is zero net zero Ooh, come on 
turning your house into a power plant, your own little small power plant. You can sell energy back to the grid. I mean, is that a flex move or what? I love Tesla. Zero. That's how you end up with the zero dollar electricity bill, which is super cool. But what if you want to sort of graduate to the next level of sustainability? What if you want to be completely independent of the grid, totally off the grid? Okay, totally off the grid. You doomsdayer. You people with the beef, beef jerky, the gold bars, uh, Bitcoinians, people who, you know, save up beans and rice in the basement and always be planning for dawn of the dead when, you know, zombie apocalypse is going to come, right? You guys, you guys pay extra close attention because this is going to be talking about the next level. See, that was level one, right? Have the solar, still connect to utilities, generate net negative. Okay, cool. Now we're moving to level two, completely off the grid. This is for you guys with the beef jerky in the basements for Armageddon. Grid. Well, that's when batteries come in. So add battery storage to this system, and now the loop is complete. So when the sun shines during the day and you're not home, it fills up the batteries, effectively storing sunshine energy. And then when you get home and the sun goes down, you can keep using that extra solar energy that you stored with all the electrical needs that you have until the next morning when the sun comes out again and starts filling up those batteries again. So with a system like this, you can theoretically not just have a $0 power bill, but never actually pull from the grid at all. You're completely self-sustainable. You never have to worry about a power outage ever again. You won't even know if a power outage happens. That is the off the grid dream, theoretically anyway. At the beginning of this process, that was my goal. So there's a lot of different options for solar system setups for different solar tile manufacturers and different battery manufacturers and different companies that will install all these things. And there's a thousand different combos that you could piece together with different companies with different offers in your area to make something that works. I kind of went with kind of a crazy, but also a made sense solution, which is just one company for everything, which would be Tesla. So it is a Tesla solar roof, Tesla power walls for batteries, and then the Tesla app to monitor and control everything. And really the main reason makes sense, but what's your main reason? I went this route was for simplicity and integration. This I, I paid a price premium for this. This was not the cheapest option. You can spec a much cheaper combo of solar panels and batteries and things like that. But just to have everything on the same page and have everything talking to each other seamlessly, this made the most sense. So then once I just yeah, and, and try to keep saving money on the front end, you end up paying more on the back end between energy, attention, and time. Even if it's not the money, having all these three different systems, ah, that might be too much, right? Smooth, one platform, Tesla across the board. And I'm not just saying that because I love Tesla. I'm not biased. Come on, guys. Once I decided to go with Tesla, then the other choice you might have heard about is either solar panels bolted to the roof or these actual solar tiles, which are new roof tiles that are actually hundreds of tiny solar panels themselves all interconnected to make a normal looking roof that's actually a giant solar panel. And See, so you hear that, guys? You have solar roof. You have these little panels that you could put on top of your actual roof. So you have the roof and then the panels, or you can have the tiles and the tiles act as a solar tile and your roof made the most sense so then once i decided to go with tesla then the other choice you might have heard about is either solar panels bolted to the roof or these actual solar tiles which are new roof tiles that are actually hundreds of tiny solar panels themselves all interconnected to make a normal looking roof that's actually a giant solar panel and that is the one that i went for and this is why i say this is this was a crazy option because i i did not actually need a new roof most people who go with the solar tiles option would either have an old roof that needs replacing soon or they're like about to build a new house and this will be the new roof that they put on it. I wasn't in either of those situations, but also this was the way to get by far the largest total array with the most coverage with as many pitches as my roof has. And also aesthetically, it looks really good too. I gotta say, there's carb appeal. Either way, I make my decision. I'm going with the solar roof. I'm going Tesla's full integrated setup. From there, I'm not gonna lie, it is quite a process. There is a lot of uh, of paperwork and hoops to jump through. Also with Tesla's, they've been kind of in and out of reliability. Like over the years, they've been on and off with actually making this product. They've paused installations for a while. It was briefly canceled and then it came back and there were supply chain issues. I remember reading about all this and I was kind of worried, uh, but for whatever reason, when I ordered, which was in 2021, basically everything went perfectly smooth as well as it could have gone. You get assigned a, a Tesla advisor just like for your project, for your solar project. They walk you through the whole process from the paperwork with the town from beginning to end. So there was an ordering process, uh, inspection, a measuring process, 
quotes, you know, filling out paperwork with the town. You actually, when you're first trying to get an estimate, you actually submit your address and they go look on Google images and look at your roof with satellite imagery and give you an initial quote. Then once you're locked in and you decide you want to go through with it, they'll actually come to your home with professionals and actually measure it and then give you a precise real quote and then start to order all the materials. You eventually get to the point where you get an install date, you start scheduling things out, uh, and then they come through with all the boxes of solar panels and they took up my whole driveway for a couple of days. There are people who have actually walked through this entire process in great detail. I'll try to link a good one below on YouTube. But at the end of the day, for me, the process, I started when I signed the purchase agreement, which was in November, 2021, and finished with the activation of the system in July, 2022. So eight months. But now that it's- Okay, eight months. Now, what he's gonna do now, he's gonna kind of go over the numbers. He's gonna go off the summer, fall, winter, spring, and you guys can kind of go back and watch that yourself. I'm gonna kind of skip ahead, skip ahead. Excuse me, the money question, and then we'll be able to see the corks and then finalize it out on the conclusion. But once again, okay, so it's not as easy as most people think as far as the process. That might be a little bit difficult, and it might be a little bit of loops and dips and turbulence that you have to go through but necessarily at the end of the day you get a good product let's continue the video so it's time for the the big summary i've had this solar setup for a full year now all four seasons it's time to run the numbers see if it was really worth it and see if it's actually good so let's start with the money question here the this like i said was nowhere near the cheapest possible option of course going with solar panels and batteries a lot of different possible setups so my setup with the solar tiles all of the materials all of the labor installation everything and the three batteries Everything together was $120,948.04. But also, as you can see, there's a federal tax credit. Ding. Richie Rich. Okay, cool. Federal tax credit. Hold on. Down here of nearly $30,000, bringing the total cost to me down to right around $93,000. So the tax credit does fluctuate quite a bit. Uh, it's actually gone up like a lot since I ordered like a year and a half ago, whatever it was. Uh, it's up to 30% now in New Jersey. So it's called the uh, New Jersey Solar Investment Tax Credit. If I ordered today, it would have been $8,000 more off. But, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. I'm not mad. It's fine. But the main question you typically see within... He mad. He mad. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, uh, $30,000. Okay, good. That's good. I, you know, government, can you give us more? 100% possibly? That would be nice investment like this is what is the payoff period? How long does it take before that investment pays for itself in saved electricity? So that's a good question. And I have to do quite a bit of math here because every bill is different. Every week, every month of electricity costs different amounts. Actually, my provider literally has different electricity rates every single hour. And there are different averages per day, per week, per season. But if I do a sort of a sweeping average for each month and how much electricity I've been using, the 54 megawatt hours of electricity that I've used in the past year uh, would have cost about $9,660. So again, that's a lot, but obviously air conditioning takes up a lot. And a lot of that is driving an electric car every single day. So of course my gas bill has been $0 this whole time, but you know that's where it comes from. So if you divide that out uh, by the total cost that I paid, it comes out to just under 10 years, 9.6 years. So. So 9.6 years, even on a house, you're around like seven with real estate. So eh. if you if you Google, like, what's a good payback period for a solar setup? The answer that the AI pops up with is like six to 10 years, which, you know, if I think about it, it makes sense, obviously. And that's great because if the panels are warranted for 25 years and you pay them off in 10 years, then they're just paying you extra for the next 15 years, however long you're in that house, which is great. So mine being on the longer end of that, am I mad at that? Not really. I think that's fine. Um, I also do know that there are a couple of things that could that I could that could have been different to make that payback period shorter. Now, actually, the number one suggestion typically would be like, okay, if you want to make the payback period shorter, get a less expensive setup, and that would make sense. But also, you have to keep in mind the coverage really matters here. So I could have gone with a much less expensive, actually, a solar panel array from Tesla on this same exact roof. And because of all the pitches on the roof, they estimated they could have put panels down on certain parts, and it would have totaled a smaller 19 kilowatt array instead of the 29 kilowatts of this. Yeah, so you see the difference and you see what happens when you decide to be cheap. <laughs> Solar tiles. I know that because that's actually what I first signed up for an estimate for as I was like juggling the idea in my head. Would that have had a shorter payback period or would that have been offset by much less electricity being produced and taking longer to pay for itself? I don't know. But the other part of that equation that I'm thinking about now is just like, I should just use more electricity so that it pays for itself faster. I want to get my values worth. I am constantly in net so I can afford to use way more electricity. And so I thought maybe about switching, um, 
you know, various appliances that aren't electric yet, maybe even switching heating to electrical. So that may be in my future. Um, but ah, that's very interesting. Woo, he's hacking it. No, that's that's very interesting. Yeah. He just says he's always in the net. He's always in the positive with his electricity. He's not using enough. So he's like, wait, hold on. I'll just use more electricity. If I use more electricity, then that will allow me to get a bang for my buck at the end of the day. And uh, the bang for his investment. He's already put so much in it. So he's not even, you know, utilizing it to its max potential. So that's very interesting. But now for all the miscellaneous weird quirks of having this brand new piece of tech on top of my house, because believe me, there are quite a few. So first of all, on the, uh, the $0 electricity bill for the whole year, that is real, which is pretty awesome. But it's also interesting that I was able to achieve the $0 bill monthly but I also used positive net grid energy for those three months during the winter. So you might be wondering, wait a second, how does that work? And the answer is net metering credits, it turns out they roll over month to month, but then they get reset once per year. So meaning when it was first activated and in the first full month of August, I produced more than I used, I ended the month with a credit of the difference, which was negative 255 kilowatt hours. And it says that on the bill. So that means the next month, even if I used 255 kilowatt hours more than I produce with solar, I would still have a $0 bill because I have that credit to play with. But month after month after month during the summer and then the fall, I was building up more and more negative credit so that by the time we got to winter, those three months in a row, I was eating into the credit, but I didn't eat all of it. So I didn't get all the way back to zero. So the, the bill was still $0 every month. So then another fun thing, uh, power outages. I have had a few power outages uh, since getting the solar system installed. Most of them just because of thunderstorms and the grid going down for a bit. I didn't even notice, which was pretty sick. I did not notice the lights didn't even flicker. I didn't actually know until I got a notification on my phone from the Tesla app saying, hey, just so you know, you're disconnected from the grid right now, but you're running off of solar and or batteries right now. So everything is good. And you've got, you know, X amount of hours of backup left and it should get you till the next morning when the sun comes up again. And there's even a storm watch feature that will preemptively make sure the power wells are full if it knows a big storm is coming. And honestly, there is a pretty sweet peace of mind knowing for a fact that if I don't charge the car, the power walls have more than enough to just use the house like normal until the next morning, air conditioning, appliances, literally whatever, and it'll be fine. And when the sun comes out again, it'll start powering everything. I could be completely off the grid for days or weeks at a time if I find somewhere else to charge the car. Now, another... Come on, mate. Come on, mate. Tesla for the win. Like Elon for the win. Solar roof for the win. Power pack for the win. Mega pack for the win. The grid went down and you just keep moving on. He didn't notice it. It was just his application said, hey, look, just so you just so you know, the grid has gone down. People are freezing out here, but you're pretty much good. All right. So protect yourself at all times. <laughs> all right. Let's see the conclusion. All right. I kind of skipped forward a bit. Thanks, guys. So let's just to wrap everything up here. My one year conclusion. Uh, this is an awesome piece of bleeding edge tech. You can tell it's bleeding edge because it's still rapidly evolving over time and it's still very expensive. So for early adopters like me who are willing to take the plunge, willing to take that risk a little bit, it can be really awesome. It kind of reminds me of electric cars. There are a lot more affordable solar setups out there that are making a meaningful difference for a lot of people in a lot of different situations all over the world. There's also much more massive, huge solar setups as well. Uh, but I think we can kind of all get behind a technology making more sustainable energy, more useful, more efficient, and more beautiful over time. I definitely learned a lot with this process, mostly in like how much electricity certain things specifically use, but also how much electricity a roof with solar panels on it can collect in different times of year, different seasons and different situations. But I don't think, honestly, I don't think I would change a thing. I don't think I would change anything in what I did other than probably waiting like six months to get a little more of a federal tax credit. Ah, well, you didn't know that, right? So, but another happy customer. We're looking good over here at Tesla. But I'll hit one last thing. It was briefly mentioned in like a Tesla earnings call, I think it was, that, uh, or maybe Elon just said it randomly, but that Tesla vehicles in a year or two, by 2025, would all support bi-directional charging, which mm -hmm. would be amazing. I don't know that that's actually going to happen, but having the cars be able to not just charge other cars, but even potentially serve as your house's backup battery would be pretty incredible. These car batteries as we're learning, are already way bigger and can support way more power output than any power wall, any home battery. One Model S battery is equivalent to like seven or eight power walls. So who knows if Tesla actually does it or not, but as of today, with the right box on the wall, with the right inverter, the F-150 Lightning, which has an even bigger battery, can actually be your house's backup battery. So I think the number of EVs that support this feature should only be slowly going up. But I think ideally, there's a world in the future where 
instead of needing like a huge, you know, the current thing needing a big solar setup and all these fancy batteries, all you really need is a small. That's pretty interesting. Somebody's just basically at that point saying, hey, back up the car so I could power my house. You know how I used to just be like pull up the car so I can jumpstart my car. Like nobody really said in the past, pull up the car so I could jumpstart my house. You know, pull up the car so I could charge my house real quick so I can get <laughs> energy for my house. So if that bi-directional energy flow comes, I mean, yeah, that would be a perfect add-on at that point. Marcus does a great job. I love this video. I think it was great. Uh, let's see what people are saying. Uh, I'm a solar representative in Texas. I've been in solar sales for eight years now, and this has been one of the best explanations and representation of how solar and net metering works. Seriously, Marcus has explained this flawlessly and if more people were educated about it i think more people would go out here and attempt to you know get this for their house and their houses that they love and they want to be in with their families okay now just a temporary home i would buy this if i wasn't broke <laughs> yeah well it's okay you can still window shop right so when you do have money you know where to come and I don't think anyone could have explained solar better than you did absolutely standing. And that was a super detailed and useful with the lack of sunshine in smaller houses, roofs in the UK. I can only generate a max around 24 kilowatts in, uh, in a day in the summer. Well, that's why you need the tiles, too. So you can maximize your roof potential versus just the solar panels that most people are selling. Really interesting. Thanks for sharing this data. One thought is the solar panels are under warranty for 25 years, but probably not the power walls. As we as we all know, batteries don't often last many years. And so the power walls would likely need to be replaced after 10, adding a longer payback period. Well, let's just do some research to make sure that actually is true because he doesn't even know. He's just speaking out the side of his neck. But hey, thanks for your contribution. Hey, and another video of Everyone Hates Tesla. Thank you for being here again. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can get more of these installments where we dive deep into Tesla as a company, past the clickbait, and past the analysis or analysts in the stock market and actually figure out the company behind the stock. Greatly appreciate it. See you guys on the next one.